Hello and welcome to Message to the Masses with Tessa. I'm super excited to be here and be your host. I am the resident publishing consultant and we are here to not just talk about books, but to really dive into the why that's the fuel to the fire for leaders, entrepreneurs, consultants, speakers, coaches, you name it. We are talking about the why behind their movements and we're here with none other than <laughs> Shireen Rivera. And Shireen is amazing. She's a super woman. She is a super writer. She's a super speaker. And I'm excited to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being Thank here. <laughs> and here's what I want to dig into, right? Like I said in the intro, you are a super writer. You're a super, 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 you're a super mom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I want to talk a little bit about how you got into the super writing. Where did that come from? Tell us a little bit about you and of course your journey as a writer. Well, writing has always been my saving grace in life. I've mm -hmm. written, I started writing poetry at a very young age and it really helped me cope with the addictions of my mother and my mother was a meth addict and mm -hmm. alcoholic and mentally ill and so dealing with that, I coped with it by writing poetry. Okay. And then when I got married into my marriage and it was an abusive marriage for 10 years, I wrote in my journal almost every single day. Mm -hmm. I wrote poems of what I was feeling and going through and just trying to gain clarity on all of it. Okay. And I didn't really think much of it until I divorced and left and started over. And again, I was trying to gain clarity in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's when writing, again, became my saving grace. Mm -hmm. And I published my first book to tell my story of domestic abuse, to help other women know they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And from there, all these incredible opportunities started coming my way. And I got into the world of ghostwriting and got my first ghostwriting contract. And I really learned that my gift of vulnerability and I say it's a gift now but before I used to think that my, me being vulnerable naturally was a weakness mm. but I learned that being vulnerable is a gift yeah. because it doesn't come naturally to most right. and I really have a gift of being able to empathize with other people and that's what really helped me in my ghostwriting career. I love that and one thing that sticks out to me is like you know nothing against education and additional uh, learning and all of that but you just really tapped into a gift and a passion that you had. It yes. wasn't like I went to you know university for 30 years and then I became a writer. Nothing against that path. But how did you even know to write? What was it? You know, how, it was it just a calling? Was it just you couldn't help it? What happened? I think that it was a little bit of both. Um, talking talking about education, I did go to college and I got my associates and my bachelors. And looking back now, I know, I see that there was always signs telling me to mm -hmm. write, to write, to write. So I went first to get my associates and I was so excited. I was going to get it in English and my dream was to go into journalism. But then somebody came and spoke some realistic logic uh, into my ear and was like, well, journalists don't make a lot of money and it's going to be hard for you to find a job and wow. yada, yada, yada. And so I completely went down a different path and tried to get into law. Right. And it wasn't my passion. Mm. My passion has always been writing and there's always been meaningful synchronicities trying to tell me to get, get into writing. So it wasn't until I was really alone with myself mm -hmm. and I had nobody else putting boundaries on me mm -hmm. that I was able to tap into my true power. And so I don't want to glance over this. The fact that someone told you, you know, writers don't make a lot of money, but that's not the case. No, like it's not. <laughs> you've left a, a corporate job yes. and you have your own business doing just that. Yes. And in order for that to work, it has to be making money, yes. right? So it's so <laughs> funny how we believe what someone else believes and, and they probably had no proof necessarily. They didn't know any other writers, but that's just what they heard mm -hmm. or they didn't understand how to monetize it. So when you got into ghostwriting, like that's really, it can be very lucrative. Yes. You know, d was that ever on your horizon? Never. <laughs> Just a never, never, never. I never even knew that I would enjoy writing someone else's autobiography or story. But when I realized that I was able to apply a gift that I have naturally, which is empathizing with other people and being able to feel what other people feel in situations, mm -hmm. 
and I was able to apply that to my writing, yeah. it, it just really, it made me feel purposeful. Right. I love that. And one thing that, you know, the way that I envision and approach, even approach ghostwriting is that you're shining the light on someone else's story. You're yes. holding the flashlight. And I want to get into that a little bit more. And we're going to, I have some questions, okay. some juicy questions for you <laughs> after the break. We'll be back in just a moment. back. This is Message to the Masses with Tessa and we have the amazing Shireen <laughs> Rivera. And before we went on break, I already prepped her and I said, listen, I got some juicy questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get into it. Um, one of the things that we were talking about um, before we went to break was ghostwriting. And you mentioned um, being able to have empathy and we talked about shining the light on someone else's story. That's important. Yes. It's important for the person who's not necessarily a ghostwriter, but it's also important for you as a ghostwriter to be able to see um, those areas of shame and make sure that you're shining a powerful light on them. Is that always easy? What's the journey that you take your authors through? Because there's some level of coaching that you have yes, to do. Yes, because I have found in my, in my experience that a lot of people have trouble vocalizing what they've been through because mm. then it makes it real. Yeah. And that just goes to for anybody in life. We have a, trouble talking about things that we ha, have felt at one point shamed about mm -hmm. or things that we have never told anybody about because mm -hmm. then it's real, right? Mm -hmm. So when someone's telling you about an experience in childhood that they've never told anybody about, it almost becomes a, a therapy session, right. you know? <laughs> Right. But it and it there is coaching that takes place. But I really am grateful that I have the ability to empathize with people, and I really feel that God has used me as a vessel mm -hmm. um, from all the struggles that I've been through in life to apply that into okay. my business. So let's. I, I have I have all these questions. So one of the questions I have about the ghostwriting. How do you, what kind of trust exercises do you have to do? Because like you said, people have never told these stories yeah. and how do you have to work with them to get them to trust you? I what, believe what is energy it that you do? is everything. So before I even have a client sign a contract, we have a few meetings where we talk and hash it out and you know, they're just getting to know me and I'm getting mm -hmm. to know them. And usually I like to do a video conference or if they live near me, we meet up and mm -hmm. we talk because if your energy d doesn't mesh with anybody, it's right. not gonna work out. Right. You know, you have to vibe. Right. right, that's important. And and when you think about just the 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 depths of the stories, like you said, sometimes they're, they're talking about family trauma. Sometimes they're talking about financial trauma. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when you get in those situations trying to get people to trust you because you want to tell a good story for them. Yes. You want the story to be powerful. You don't want it to feel forced. You don't want it to feel like just going through the motions. Yes. And so how do you separate because it's almost like you're taking on their story mm -hmm. how do you separate that from you know to make sure you hold on to all the healing you've done yeah. how do you separate that for me there's a few things that i do um i don't know if you are into meditation but i mm -hmm. do a lot of meditating and i also have found that after my meetings with people when i write every even though the meetings are recorded when i write everything down um, of how I am picture that chapter to be or mm -hmm. envision it to be mm -hmm. and ideas that I have That's me kind of dumping it on paper mm -hmm. and letting it go so that I don't take it with me mm -hmm. and feel like oh I have to remember this. I have to remember that mm -hmm. And you know what that's that's powerful um, as someone who writes I can tell you there is a healing that yeah. happens when you um, release information um, when you finally get the words out of your head and onto paper yes. it's extremely powerful um, how many books would you say you've helped with as far as ghostwriting so far? So far, since I just entered this world, about seven. Seven. And then I'm working right now on four. Wow. That's, how do you keep Including that Including my books. 
I don't know. To be <laughs> honest, like I, I asked myself that when I first started, but I really feel that when you're passionate about something, mm -hmm. it's not a question of how you're going to do it. You know, mm. you just make a point to do it. And it's something that I enjoy. It's something I look forward to. It's what gives me the spark in the mornings to get up. Writing is everything to me. Right. And it's something I look forward to doing and I make time to do. Mm -hmm. I bring my laptop everywhere with me I and I'm that. always writing. I, I take myself out to dinner just to write mm -hmm. and eat. My kids are playing, I write, I'm always writing, so. I love that. <laughs> you know what? Coming from a, a background where people say they don't have time to write and then to hear you say, I'm always writing, I know exactly what yes. you mean. Um, there's myths that we just have to kill that I don't have time myth no. and all of that good stuff. So we're about to take a break, but I want to kind of prepare you because I still got some juiciness okay. to <laughs> dig into. Um, I really want to talk about um, your mindset around the books that you have coming up. I want you to just pour out to us and let us know what to expect from you. Okay. But we'll be back in just a moment. back to Message to the Masses with Tessa. We are here with the beautiful and amazing Shireen Rivera. We've really, she's just told us everything, spilled all the tea. <laughs> We've talked about your ghost writing. Let's talk about what you have coming down the pipeline. What books do can we expect from you? What are you working on? So I co-authored a book with my six-year-old son. I love that. <laughs> I love that. His, so I love his it. is going to come out before the school season. It's titled, I Am Not Scared. And I have another book that I wrote, just me. And it's an empowerment gu guide for the go-getting woman. Okay. And this is really about what it means to empower yourself and motivate yourself alone in the corner of the world. Mm -hmm. Because I have learned that when you're chasing a dream and you achieve a level of success, it can be a very lonely time. Mm -hmm. You can feel very isolated, very let down by family members and people close to you. Mm -hmm. And I have looked for books on this subject and there are not a lot of books on mm -hmm. this subject about how to chase your dream alone. Wow. And to not let anybody, any doubts that people have about what you're doing, don't let that be placed inside your um, mental mindset. I love that. So that's that book. And then I have another book that I'm co-authoring with a professor. His name is Marshall Jones, okay. and it's called My House to Paint. Okay. And it's about his life, but life lessons to rise above okay. and to gain success in life. I love that. All very powerful books. I. I might be a little bit biased. I'm really looking forward to I Am Not Scared. <laughs> Just because it amazes me, I want to support, I always want to support you, but I, I'm, I'm excited that you are not only, we talk about teaching kids how to read. We never really talk about teaching them how to write. Yes. So that is powerful, that is exciting. Um, that's a journey I want to be a part of. And so I really am excited about that and all that you're doing. Please tell, me tell the viewers how to stay connected with you how to find you where you're going to be in the next couple of months so you can find me on my website and that's www.shereenrivera.com s-h-a-r-e-e-n rivera.com and then i'm also on linkedin facebook instagram under shereen rivera and follow me because I have big things coming up. <laughs> and I also have a YouTube channel called Rising Above and it's YouTube slash C slash Shereen Rivera. I love it. So I want you to leave our, our audience with a word of encouragement yes. to, so that they can go out and write their book or start their business or whatever it is that they dream of. So my message behind my business is that sharing is an integral part of healing until you own your past and your past experiences and where you are today with what you've been given, you can't really own your identity until you own that. And sharing your story is a part of that. Writing things down without being worried about the judgment of others, what family members are going to think, who's going to hate you, who's going to stop talking to you. You need to just own your truth write it on paper without thinking about what other people are going to think. Just worry about what you think and own that. 
because who's meant to be in your life will stay. Who's not meant to be in your life will leave. And when you walk in purpose, nothing can stop you. I love that. What a beautiful way for us to wrap this up. As always, I am all about <laughs> telling your story, shining the light on something in your story that once gave you shame because it empowers others. It teaches others. It even encourages you to keep going. Um, I am a big proponent of getting your message to the masses. You are doing that thank you, by Tessa. leaps and bounds. I cannot thank you enough for being here, telling us about you, your amazing co-author, <laughs> <laughs> your amazing co-authors and all of the work that you're doing. I really appreciate you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And as always, we, we encourage you to go out, be an author on a mission, be a person on a mission, use your story to fuel your fire and We'll see you next time on Message to the Masses with Tessa.